This is the Internet Report, where we uncover what's working and what's breaking on the Internet and why. This week, we're going to talk about a major outage that happened over the holiday week. So this happened the day before Thanksgiving on November 25th, and that was a major outage of a service within AWS. And this had pretty far-reaching consequences across a number of different services. If you're a customer of Ring or iRobot, which makes the Roomba, like you would have noticed the effect of this outage and it was fairly prolonged. So it was a, it was a pretty big deal. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna just talk about that particular incident today. Uh, so the first thing is that this was not a network related issue. So um, it kicked off, uh, there was a maintenance uh, window in which some servers were added to a service called Kinesis, which is like a real time data processing um, service and for streaming data. And um, then the issue started to kick off um, around 5.15 a.m. Pacific time on November 25th. And over the course of a day, um, there was a number of mitigation actions that were taken by AWS, um, but it wasn't fully resolved until uh, 10 23 p.m. that evening. So we're talking and, I mean, <laughs> this is all day. Really, yeah, it's more than all day. Yeah. No, and, and one of the things that, you know, um, is unique in terms of the resolution of this outage is that um, there was um, a lot of. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say back and forth, but time taken to identify the root cause. Yep. It was yep. suspected to be, you know, um, something else, uh, but then the root cause uh, turned out to be kind of a latent issue, uh, which kind of the um, the update or the increase in capacity triggered. Um, yeah. So I think that explains, that was one of the reasons why it took long to even figure out, okay, what was happening? How do we like rectify it? But then, Another reason, um, as has, it has been laid out in AWS, is a pretty detailed, like, you know, um, post outage um, description is that in terms of bringing back these servers, you couldn't like bring them back all, you couldn't restart the service all at the same time. So they kind of had to get, um, you know, spread out during the course of the day. Um, so something to the effect of, you know, they could only add back servers at the rate of, you know, a few hundred per hour. So by yeah. the time they scaled back, it, it pretty much took the whole day. Yeah, it was really interesting because the as as you said, you know, they yes, they did an update. It wasn't the update itself or the adding of additional servers, but it hit up against an, a limitation that was within the system right. prior to this. So as you said, a latent issue, which was also the cause of of some previous cloud outages um, that we saw, like for example, Google and Microsoft. Um, and the, the limitation was, um, you know, just an operating system configuration that limited the number of concurrent threads um, mm -hmm. uh, that it would support. Um, and, and then because of that, that started to trigger um, uh, errors and they started to see issues. But what was kind of interesting about this is just the, not only the impact to the customers using Kinesis, but also how it affected other services within AWS that, that had some dependency on it. And in some cases, the dependency wasn't critical. Like they could mm -hmm. still, in theory, function with Kinesis not being available to them, but they were still highly impacted by this. Right. I think Cognito is the one that you're yeah. referring to, which is more like... Uh, it's an authentication use, service. Yeah. Right. Um, for logging in. And the way Cognito uses Kinesis is to, um, you know, collect and analyze some API um, trends and all of that. So, you know, Kinesis is not really in the um, uh, workflow, if you may, um, to log in or to authenticate. But yeah, it's not essential to the function yeah. of Cognito. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the dependency in Kinesis, while it was processing all of these, you know, um, API requests and the delay there, kind of choked the authentication uh, workflow itself. So folks were unable to like even authenticate into um, Cognito. So that was yeah. one so type of dependency. Yeah, and it really revealed kind of like the resiliency fault lines, if you will, with that, with Cognito and, and Kinesis and how what they thought might have been um, fault tolerance, what right. that mechanism wasn't actually working. And so, you know, that's in their postmortem, they did say that that's something that they're, they're hoping to address um, or, or have already addressed. Um, so, so that's, that's kind of one issue where it's like, even within AWS, there's a lot of like, they're using 
their own services quite heavily. And so there's a lot of interrelated um, kind of uh, dependencies across them, but also with their their customers, I think it's interesting because, um, as you mentioned, like it could be that they had a customer who was reliant on Cognito, not on Kinesis, mm -hmm. that would have been impacted. And we've seen that kind of hidden dependency um, kind of Quite issue a bit, in a lot of outages, right? Yeah. Yeah, especially like if we rewind um, three years and, you know, we remember that S3 outage that was that happened again um, in AWS, uh, there were a bunch of services that were dependent on S3. Now, a service like S3, and if you're, say, hosting a website, for instance, within AWS, you kind of understand that it's not necessarily a hidden dependency. You know that, you know, you're dependent on S3 right. if there is some storage there. But um, so that's a good example where S3 went down and uh, some of um, AWS's like monitoring on status pages went down too with right. that. We'll, we'll get back to that in terms of, you know, how to monitor and like all of that. Um, but, you know, the point of hidden dependency and then we were talking about that just before getting on this, this show is like, okay, I know as, as an enterprise, I know there are some certain dependencies while I'm, you know, putting my service on AWS. And, and you can ask the provider in terms of, you know, what your resiliency um, and then feedback mechanism is if one service goes down. But what about all of those hidden dependencies that, you know, you have no idea about, right? Like yeah. um, CloudWatch using Kinesis or right. Cognito using Kinesis or uh, maybe, service A um, using service B and service B using Kinesis, then exactly, you know, all yeah. of those cascading dependencies, like mm -hmm. as an enterprise, you actually have no idea about. Yeah. Um, and there's a, there's a few things, I mean, here that I think, you know, are takeaways. One of them is, you know, there's, there's really is a need when you're using a lot of these external services, things that you don't control. Yeah. There's an increased need for transparency. Yep. And transparency can be achieved a couple of different ways. One is just knowing that you need to be asking these questions and demanding that your providers are clear about what the underlying architecture is of some of these services. So you understand like, okay, you know, what happens if, you know, this goes down and, and what are you relying on? Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, just the need again, when you, when you don't have control of a lot of these services, you need to, you need to be able to see them and understand, um, for example, if you have a critical service, you know, maybe you need to be monitoring that service and know, for example, do they have one DNS provider? Do they have multiple yep. DNS providers? Um, and so really kind of start to map out, you know, what your um, uh, issues could potentially be if, if something were to go wrong. Um, and that's why monitoring is just so important. Speaking of monitoring, yes, CloudWatch, um, again, yet another service, a pretty popular um, AWS service, right, that again, now uses Kinesis for processing metrics and log data. And there was definitely an impact in terms of, you know, um, being unable to collect your metrics. If you're relying on CloudWatch um, and say you were a customer that was impacted by this, your first like, you know, um, impulse reaction is to go check your monitoring system to see if it was you, if it was, you know, somebody right. else. Right. And there you go, if you're relying on CloudWatch, then you were like, you know, pretty much dead in water there. Like you really didn't know what was happening. Right. Um, again, very similar to what we've seen in the past with um, the S3 outage as well. Like I was saying, uh, I remember um, trying to get into the, you know, Amazon status, like, you know, page in terms of what's going wrong and that didn't load because of that internal dependency. Now, I believe based on the, um, you know, um, RCA, uh, Amazon's planning to add some kind of changes that will allow CloudWatch users to, you know, um, access metrics within a three-hour window locally. So, you know, you yeah. might not like, you know, yeah. um, see an issue, but this was more than a 12-hour window. So, right. <laughs> right. And, and also, I think it just, you know, provokes the question um, of, you know, do you need more kind of independent monitoring um, or monitoring not. capability? And you may still use CloudWatch, but you also may need something, you know, to independently um, uh, monitor. Triangulate, uh, exactly. Your, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because it's like who, who's, who watches the watcher, right? Like you, you, you want to make sure that you're not overly right. dependent on one particular entity. Yeah, and, and in a lot of cases, right, like in this example, for instance, like um, you as an enterprise relying on Kinesis, for instance, you are pretty much not going to be able to do anything 
in terms of solving the issue. But, you know, at least if you know there is a problem, yeah, there is exactly. a level of communication that you can send back to your customers, like, you know, kind of explaining what the issue is or at least right, giving right. them a heads up, right? Because exactly. a lot of this is relying brand loyalty and like, you know, making sure protecting your own brand as well, um, especially with this increased um, dependency that, that we're seeing in, in the age of the cloud right now. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. Um, really, really interesting lessons. And again, like a lot of these recent outages were kind of, were, it's just another illustration of, of what we, we've been talking about um, right. all this time. And, I, you know, going back to a couple of points that we, you know, touched about, right, Anjali, like in terms of um, monitoring, um, and, and it's usually thought about from an operational standpoint, right? Like, okay, um, I need to make sure my service is working once it's live in production. But even from that angle of you know, understanding those dependencies, right, that has to happen um, in the architecture yep. stage of, you yep. know, as you're thinking about Absolutely. moving your apps, right? Mm -hmm. um, because who knows what dependency your app would kind of get impacted with as well. Monitoring is the second aspect to it, but just identifying those has to happen kind of in the um, baselining and readiness space of, um, you know, your cloud Absolutely. deployment and cloud migration itself. And then um, who so is really thinking about, yeah, yeah. Who's watching the watcher, but also thinking about monitoring as you're saying from a life cycle standpoint, right? Exactly. Like you're really kind of thinking about it at every stage from your, you know, uh, from the architecture standpoint, from yep. the services selection, vendor selection, resiliency, fallback, you know, Q and A rollout, and then operations. <laughs> I mean, it's right. just at like every it's, stage, right? It's at every stage, like monitoring becomes important. And then, um, the other aspect which was interesting to me is like, you know, probe your cloud provider, right? Like ask these questions. It's totally fine to ask these questions um, and, and kind of um, have them be transparent. And I think most of the cloud providers, you know, are transparent, especially in the case when there is an outage in terms of giving um, RCA yeah. and things like that. And I don't think anybody tries to willfully hide information. It's just a matter of help them sometimes connect the dots, yeah. right? Like in the case of Cognito or in the case of like, you know, CloudWatch, like um, these dependencies existed, but, you know, were, they didn't catch it themselves. Like, you know, they didn't know it could have impacted this way. So I would rather think of this as more collaborative in terms of, you know, help them connect the dots in that way you're benefited as well in terms of identifying these. Exactly, exactly. And they have a lot of customers. And so you really yeah. need to understand how their services are impacting you and then communicate to your point and collaborate as needed because maybe they've tuned their, you know, their service or their routing in a particular way, but it might be impacting you and, and that's not optimal. And so, but if you have information that you can share, if you have evidence of a particular state, you exactly. Can, you can communicate more effectively. And then typically that's going to work. That's going to get you a resolution um, and it's going to get you the transparency that you need um, to yeah. operate effectively. And, and we've seen this, right? Like um, we produce a cloud report every year and there are certain anomalies that show up and cloud providers are pretty good about like um, making sure those are rectified because at the end of the day, um, you know, their business relies on you know, enterprises. So making sure that experience is good is, is up to their advantage. It's not anymore um, a placing blame, but it's more about like, let's educate, be transparent. Um, so, you know, we can all benefit uh, together. So we've actually seen, um, you know, personally that um, some of these outages or some of those anomalies that exist, they've actually been rectified pretty quickly. Yeah. And, and it's just been a positive um, um, approach there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. right. So That's that was our, our roll up of the AWS outage. Again, you know, it's all about the dependencies in this brave <laughs> yeah. new world. So, right. you yeah. know, make sure that you, you, you have the lay of the land, so to speak. Right. Um, all right. Um, with that, we'll, we'll wrap up today's show. And, and Gavin, um, we know you were interested in seeing this show. So hopefully this was useful for you. Um, and, um, if not, let us know how else we could help. And again, for the rest of you, um, don't forget to hit subscribe, follow us on Twitter. As always, if you have questions, feedback, if you have any interesting guests that you would like to see on the show, uh, send us a note at internetreport at thousandeyes.com. And if you're new to the show and you want to claim your free t-shirt, um, that's the same address you hit, internetreport at 
thousandeyes.com with your address and t-shirt size and we'll get that right over to you. And um, with that, we'll see you next week. <laughs>